All right, welcome back to Double Fries No Slaw. I am joined by on threes Josh Newberg. Some news today is Marcus Woodson seems to be taking a job at Arkansas in a similar role. We wanted to come and talk with you guys a little bit about Coach Woodson leaving, maybe some replacement names, and a few other thoughts. Josh, how you doing? I'm great. It's just great to be here. Double Fries No Slaw. Are we live or is it, what are we doing here? No, this is recorded. This is recorded. Okay. So not then it's just great to be here. <laughs> um, nothing you love more than uh, coaching search season, right? And we didn't really think we why you're get... having me on. Yeah, we didn't think we would get a coaching. Yeah, I had you on zero for recruiting. Uh, but here we go coaching. And here we... <laughs> <laughs> There's an Josh, come on here tonight. Um, Coach Woodson, no longer at Florida State. Um, you've talked about him at length, but just share some thoughts about uh, – Florida State and him parting ways. Do you think that that's similar to a, a Marv situation from last year where neither side had? Like, just, just talk to us about that in general. Yeah, I think it was. Um, if you look, you know, last season, I was pretty critical of Coach Woodson in terms of recruiting and also kind of on the field. And we spoke about, you know, Travis Hunter leaving. And I said that was his safety. His safety net just departed because that was the one thing that, you know, Coach Woodson was holding down, which was Travis Hunter, the number one corner in the nation, number one player overall, um, was committed. But then he he flips, and Coach Woodson no longer has that safety blanket to to kind of keep him steady at Florida State. And you saw last offseason, they brought in three defensive back off-field coaches. They brought in Greg Moss, they brought in Coach Fuller, and they brought in Kewan Ratliff, right? So that's three off-field moves to kind of bolster – the on-field play of the defensive back. So that in itself, Mike Norvell was kind of sending a message like, hey, I'm bringing in some help. I'm bringing in three certified defensive back coaches, well, you know, in different varieties. Kiwan, uh, a former player, Corey Fuller, a uh, high school head coach and a former player. And then Greg Moss, a former coach, uh, an on-field coach that he brought on to his off-field off staff. So there was a lot of help for Marcus Woods in this, this season. Um, I don't think that the cornerbacks were probably Florida State's biggest issue. Um, they had some issues on defense, but I think the writing was just on the wall. Very similar to Coach Marv leaving last offseason. I fully believe that Coach Woodson understood that maybe his time at Florida State, maybe, you know, this is the end of it. It might be time to get off this roller coaster and head over to Arkansas, and for good reason. He, he, he leaves Florida State. Um, likely is a co-defensive coordinator i haven't seen the official reports yet but i think he gets a title and he'll probably get a pay increase so it's a win-win on both sides um woodson moves on to a new job a better title as co-defensive coordinator i think i think that's part of his deal and um florida state is going to bring replace him and you know they're going to hopefully get some better play from the defensive secondary with whoever they hire yeah, the secondary wasn't it certainly wasn't a strength for FSU. Like you said, there were other issues as well. But just uh, for a school that's known as DBU, just hasn't been very good in the last um, few years. Just from a lot of perspectives, you know, the the Travis Hunter debacle, recruiting development there. Um, all right, talk to us about this. Are you hearing some names, some some replacement thoughts? I know you talked a little bit about, you know, maybe some internal options, some external options. What are you thinking about uh, who and how this position gets replaced? Well, I like to kind of break down a coaching search from all angles. Uh, right now, you know, it's fresh. It's just open. So, okay, wh who's making the decision? You know Coach Norvell is going to make the final decision. But who else is going to have a hand in it? Is Randy Shannon going to have a hand in it? Is Adam Fuller going to have a hand in it? And if so, how much? Um, so you kind of look at some commonalities. I think uh, Corey Bell down at FIU could be somebody that they were to pursue. I think you could see maybe a TJ Rushing. Let's throw the, the TJ Rushing name back out there. Like, I, I don't, I'm not saying that I have inside information on this, but we got to understand how does Mike Norvell feel about TJ Rushing taking the job for a month and then leaving for Texas A&M? Was that, you know, no issue? Was there some animosity towards that? I have no idea. Um, so, but I think TJ rushing would be a common name because, Hey, Mike Norvell's already hired him what once or twice already. So what's the third time? Um, I think if you're going to look 
outside, uh, well, also inside, right? We mentioned Greg Moss. I think Cortez Carter is a possibility. He's been an on-field coach before. I think if they're going to promote from within, I think Greg Moss, Cortez Carter, then you also have Corey Fuller and Kiwan Ratliff uh, on your defensive staff. But Greg Moss and Cortez Carter have, have coaching experience. And just knowing how Mike Norvell hires, he's very diligent in terms of the coaches that he talks to, the time that he puts into some of these hires. In the position that Florida State's in right now, I think they're going to hire a coach with on-field experience um, just based on their options and based on where this team is and where this team can go. It, it really needs to take the next step now. Um, if we're not in the building phase anymore. I think they're going to go with an experienced hire. So with that, like I said, um, I mentioned TJ Rushing. I mentioned Corey Bell. Um, because if you think about if Randy Shannon's going to have a big say in it, um, then I do think he would turn to a guy like Corey Bell. I don't really know what an Adam Fuller hire would necessarily look like. Um, but, you know, one thing I also know that the this staff wants to do is get better at recruiting in the South Florida area. So what yeah. better place to do that than start in Miami with Demarcus Van Dyke? Um, he's not an on-field coach yet, but could this be the big opportunity that he needs to get on the field? I don't know, but it could be – you know, beneficial for two sides um, on field and recruiting for Florida State. You know, Florida State kind of needs a boost at both positions. Not that Florida State's defensive back recruiting has been bad, but it can be better at Florida State. And I think, you know, they want to do better at on field coaching. And this hire needs to also be a better recruiter. I want to ask you in just a moment about a couple of alums that our fan base loves to loves to bring up and loves to chat about. But just before I do that, if you guys are watching or listening, go to thegramco.com. Appreciate them and their support. Thank them for sponsoring this video. Um, TJ25 at checkout at thegramco.com. They are leaders when it comes to Delta 8 products. Um, whether you're looking for vapes, gummies, pre-rolls, wake and bake coffee, whatever you are in the mood for, they will get you taken care of. TheGramco.com, no founded, vet owned, the best people in the world to work with. TheGramco.com, TJ25 at checkout. All right, got to ask you, They every time this position has even gotten close to coming open, we've got to ask about T-Buck and Antonio Cromartie. <laughs> well, T-Buck has a job as far as I know, right? Yeah. But he's the head coach of a XFL yeah. team. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, the last time there was a DB job opening, um, he accepted that job, right? He's he's had that for a couple of years now. So I don't know. Um, I haven't heard anything about T-Buck. And then the other, Antonio Cromartie, goes along kind of the same lines as what I was saying before. I think this is going to be an experienced hire. I don't know if you're going to bring somebody in and – Antonio Cromartie, Demarcus Van Dyke, they kind of both fall under the same category of they've never been on field coaches and they've been part of programs, but not part of your program. Um, so we'll see. I don't think that it, they're ready to make that jump right yet at Florida State, but we'll see. I don't know. It's just Mike Norvell hasn't seemed to, to make that type of hire during his time at Florida State. Florida State seemed to try to make some hires last off season and just couldn't really get any traction probably due to winning eight games in two years if you had to rank on a scale of one to ten the the position that mike norvell is into hire right now like the the strength of the position that he's into hire right now like it, you know much stronger this year than he's ever had right like are you expecting this to potentially be a pretty big hire yeah, I've heard from, well, I don't know if I would consider a big hire. Like I said, it all comes down to who's making the decision. And ultimately, Mike Norvell is going to make that decision. But I don't know if it's going to be, you know, for Florida State fans, I think uh, they're looking for an external hire. I don't really know why that excites fans so much. Maybe because Mike Norvell's made, yeah. <laughs> made two hires and they've all been promotions from within. Um, but like I said, I think Greg Moss would be the pr promotion from within or Cortez Andrews only because they have that on-field coaching experience. Um, Kiwan Ratliff does not have that. Corey Fuller does not have that. Um, he does have head co head coaching experience at the high school level. Uh, but yeah, Antonio Cromartie kind of falls under that lack of experience. I don't know if Mike Norvell is willing to go outside of his program to hire somebody that's never been an on-field coach. 
Um, any other dark horse candidates or anybody that you're thinking of at other programs besides the ones you've mentioned that you want to maybe drop a line on and we'll get out of here? Yeah, I think Florida State and Mike Norvell need to reach out to Jeremy Pruitt and, you know, reignite an old flame. Get, get him in here to coach DBs <laughs> on a discount. Um, the man knows how to recruit in the NIL era. Did you see that Jim Leonard was at the uh, Cheez-It Bowl the other night? You think that might have something <laughs> to do with it. I saw Big Noel say that the other day. So, oh, so funny. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm eager to see. I'm not really fully involved in this one, so I can kind of sit back and put my thoughts together. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to see what happens because, like I said, he has at every opportunity so far, Mike Norvell has chosen to promote from within. Um, we'll see what he does here. I don't I don't know if I expect him to do the same this time around. Josh, where can people find your content now with On3? Tell people about the show. Tell me where to go subscribe, and we'll get out of here. Yeah, I got a great show every Monday and Thursday. It's called The Inside Scoop. Go to the On3 YouTube page. Me and J.D. Piquel are doing a great job putting out content every single day. A couple videos every single day on the On3 YouTube page. Go hit that subscribe button for me. Thank you. All right, Josh, we appreciate it, man. Talk to you soon. All right, see you, TJ. See you, buddy. Cool. All right, that was Josh Newberg of On3, talking a little bit about coaching searches and who Florida State may be looking at to fill this void in. Marcus Woodson takes the job at Arkansas and will no longer be part of Florida State's staff. Keep it locked right here to Double Fries No Slaw. Make sure you subscribe. Thumbs up on the video. Comment below who you want to be the DB coach here at FSU. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Go Knowles.